Hello and welcome to Dexter Branch Woodworks YouTube channel, which I know is a mouthful. Uh, my name is Heath and in this video we'll be looking at the Grizzly G0948 10 inch bandsaw. I purchased this bandsaw about a month ago as an upgrade to the bandsaw I had been using, which was the Win 9 inch bandsaw. Uh, my wind saw was working fine, but I wanted a bandsaw with a little more power and more lethal capacity. And what drew me to this saw was that it had a 6 and quarter inch lethal capacity which is more than some 14 inch bandsaws and double that of my current saw, which is only 3.5 inches. This saw is a half horse, whereas my win is advertised as a 1.3 horse. However, I'm not sure how they come to that figure. I do not, it doesn't feel like it has that much power. In my mind, this saw was double the price of my win, which I thought would equal at least as much power and most likely more than my win, which you will see later was not the case. Uh, overall, this saw seems pretty sturdy. There's not a ton of plastic parts, uh, and it seems to be pretty durable for the most part. It does come with a miter gauge and a push stick. The miter gauge has an aluminum slide, but the rest is plastic, and it seems kind of flimsy, much like the gauges that come with most saws. It only took 15 minutes or so to put together. The instructions were very intuitive and easy to follow. Basically, just bolt the frame and the stand legs together and attach the stand to the saw. Now with the stand on, the saw sits about six foot high and for me being a tall guy, it's a little low. So I would probably build a cart for it to sit on uh, to raise it up a little bit higher so I don't have to bend over quite as much. Uh, it would also help to have a second person to attach the stand to the saw. Uh, it was a little tricky to do by myself, but I was able to find a way to get it done. A little bit tight in some spots to get everything tightened. The next part is to attach the cast iron table to the saw with four bolts. Uh, again, this table is cast iron and it feels very rigid. Uh, to attach, then you attach the fence gauge uh, to the table with four wing bolts. All of this was pretty easy and it felt solid once I was complete. Uh, there are some adjustments that you may have to make to get everything level and square with the blade. Uh, but for me, it was very close to square right out of the box uh, and it didn't need too much adjusting to get everything just perfect on it. Uh, the one thing I do like about this saw is how you adjust the guide bearings. It has these knobs and it's very easy to adjust for a blade change. Um, unlike my wind saw, that had, you had to have an Allen key to make the adjustments and it was kind of hard to get to those little screws to make those adjustments. Another cool feature of this saw is the dust collection port. Um, it has a four inch, a three inch, and a two inch port, which should accommodate most all dust collection. The one big thing that I did not like about this saw was the fence. Uh, as you can see here, there's a lot of movement when trying to clamp the fence down, which makes it hard to keep it square to the blade, and then also in the position that you need. It really needs something to secure it on that opposite side when clamping so it doesn't try to come up when you go to clamp it down in place. Now the first thing that I wanted to try with this saw was the resaw capacity. Uh, I make a lot of coasters and I like to resaw them down so I can make two sets instead of just having a, a really thick one set. Um, so I got a piece of four and a half inch uh, four quarter walnut to test with. And right off, as soon as I started the cut, the saw was really struggling to make the cut. I knew it would be slow, so I tried to go as slow as possible and give the chance, saw a chance to keep up. Um, but as you'll see, there was still a lot of blade drift, which may have been my fault. I did not adjust the bottom guide bearings. I only adjusted the top prior to this testing. Another thing that may have helped this out would be to have a wider and better blade. I just used the blade that came with the saw, but if I used a half inch blade, it may have made this a little bit better. And I'm sure if I'd have made those adjustments uh, to keep the blade from drifting so much, it probably would have made a lot smoother cut and made it a little bit easier to do. Uh, but still the saw was straight. Next, I wanted to try to make one of my bandsaw reindeer uh, here is where I was very disappointed. 
I've made several of these with my wind band saw with no issues, uh, but at this test, the saw really struggled to make the cuts. Uh, I even made some relief cuts in order to try to make it a little bit easier, but it still struggled a pretty good bit, and this is just a pine two by four. Again, a better blade and the correct adjustments on the guide bearings probably would have made this work a little bit better, uh, but this saw just seems to be under, underpowered for what I would need and for the amount of resaw capacity that it has. Uh, overall, I think this saw is well made and be fine for some of the easier cuts that I have to do, uh, but it's just not what I was looking for. I plan to return this guy and get something a little bit beefier. Uh, so as you can probably tell that at this point, this is my first YouTube video and hopefully it's not a complete train wreck. But if you got something out of this video or just like seeing train wrecks, uh, hit those like and subscribe buttons. A quick disclaimer, I am far from a professional woodworker and I also don't have any Festool products. Uh, I've yet to successfully make a dovetail joint and nothing in my shop was over a thousand dollars. I'm just a regular guy who enjoys woodworking. But I do hope to do more of these review videos and maybe even some projects videos so you can see what not to do. Uh, anyhow, that's it. Thanks for watching.